Now we're going to look at uh, just a few of the major fashion houses in uh, the early 2000s. And we're going to start with John Galliano. He's a Spaniard. He trains in, in London. He first works for Givenchy for a year, and then he's at Dior from 1996 to, to uh, 2011. And he has his own line um, called John Galliano uh, that ran from 1988 to 2011. And he's now at Maison Martin Margiela. So Galliano was a major visionary designer who everyone predicted would sort of um, implode because he was such a, a fierce partier and intense personality and so over the top all of his shows and indeed he did. In 2011 he was um, completely drunk and drug addled and made a bunch of anti-Semitic comments and he was promptly fired from the House of Dior. Um, he's since made a comeback at the um, house Maison Martin Margiela, but many people have never forgiven him for um, his remarks. Another person who takes over a, a, a very old French design house, Lanvin, is Albert Elbez, the Israeli designer. And he has a huge success there, and then they let him go. It was just incredible to everybody that they would let such a successful person go. Nevertheless, they did. Here are a few more looks by Albert Elbez. So they're super, these luxurious fabrics with sublime draping, and they're very feminine with these uh, luxurious deep jewel tone colors. And then here is Albert Elbez himself on the right, who just is so wonderful looking. And more of his creations. So certain fashion designers come along, like John Galliano, just really magnificently creative. And um, Albert Elbez with these lush looks, they're very signature. A third really tremendously important women's wear designer is Phoebe Philo for uh, Celine when she designed for the House of Celine. She first designs for um, Chloe from uh, 2000 to 2006, but it was really her, her tenure um, uh, work at Celine from uh, 2008 to 2018 that really set a new standard. And you're looking at some of these from uh, 2010. They were super pared down, minimal, but very, very chic. And it just set off this sort of, you know, they were very simple. It's just like set the whole sort of fashion world on fire. Everybody was knocking her off like mad. So I've talked a lot about the House of Chanel because it's so iconic and also for Karl Lagerfeld's work for, for Chanel. You know, he designed for Chanel from 1983 until his death in 2019. So he is incredibly important for re continually reinventing Chanel. And this is a really important show he had in 2010 where he imported this giant iceberg from Sweden and had all these ice, ice carvers in there carving it out and the models walked in the water like in the sloppy melting iceberg. Um, and all the, all the fur on these garments were faux, which really was tying into that trend of not using real fur. Nicolas Gesquier is a very interesting designer because he graduates from high school and then he, he just sort of um, decides he wants to be a designer and goes and gets apprenticeships at these houses for like Agnes B. in France and Jean-Paul Gaultier and, and uh, he sort of learns on the job. Um, but the big surprise is when he is um, appointed creative director for Balenciaga, the great house of Balenciaga. Remember him? Cristobal Balenciaga? Um, so he designs from 19, for them from 1997 to 2012. And he really completely revitalizes the house, um, experiments with a lot of um, contrasting materials and uh, patchwork, really interesting uh, combinations of um, fabrics.
together. Here, um, Gesquier is taking that active wear that we've seen um, seeping into sportswear and just creates a whole new sculptural look from it. So he's referencing the lacing on footballs and the padding, footballs themselves, the laces, but also the padding underneath football uniforms and also uh, little boxing booties from um, the 19th century and just wonderfully inventive. Alexander McQueen is another really interesting designer. He's a Seville Row apprentice at age 16. That means he worked in the, in the top-notch men's tailoring um, area in London at the age of 16. So he learned the most difficult tailoring techniques, and I feel like it informs everything that he does, and those are my favorite works by him. But of course, we know him as this really highly conceptual designer. He also worked with theatrical costume designers, and you can see that in his work, and then the designer Romeo Gigli, then he goes to Central St. Martin's in London, and then designs for Givenchy, and in 2001 he starts his own uh, line, um, and he kills himself in 2010. This was one of his highly conceptual, I mean none of his shows were not um, highly conceptual, but this is Alexander McQueen's show, It's Only a Game, where the models actually were like a set up like chess pieces and um, the game of chess was played um, rather than a, a design show, a, you know, regular runway show. And I just have to add that um, about his death, he was under this tremendous pressure and all of these designers are to come up with collection after collection, relentless collections. So this was an amazing show that um, Alexander McQueen created in spring 2010, inspired by Darwin's Origin of Species, and uh, Nick Knight's showstudio.com filmed it. So he had these um, models as like quasi creatures uh, with these cameras that were film very actively filming the whole runway show at the same time and projecting it behind them on a screen. Uh, and it was really these crazy camera, crazy camera work, and the fashions were really insect-like. And of course, these famous shoes that sort of take um, the human foot into a completely new sculptural form. Very important seminal show. I'm showing you this M.C. Escher drawing because it's... Um, what Alexander McQueen based one of his shows off of, which I'm about to show you. So this was McQueen's uh, uh, fall tw 2009 show, and really he 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 essentially piled up a big pile of garbage and spray painted it all black, and it was in the middle. It was like the centerpiece of the show, and then he had all of these very very exaggerated creations. Um, and every, everything was exaggerated, the, the model's lipstick and, and all of the, um, all the pieces in the show. And um, this was his last show, and he said he had designed it for this Indian princess, but it's really based off of Byzantine fashion, if you go back to the earliest fashion. It's just a knockoff of Byzantine fashion, and, and in fact, the, the little short coat on the left is a direct knockoff of a Middle Ages cope or giant semicircular cape of a Richard the, Roger II of Sicily. Gareth Pugh is another fantasist uh, designer. Um, so he graduates from Central St. Martin's and he works for the English National Opera and you can tell these are so theatrical, right? And he has this debut in 2004 and um, those theatrical looks really inform his work. The design duo of Victor and Rolf are highly conceptual as well. Um, they love to play with the idea of fashion as art and um, like to push the boundaries on um, 
design. So I have a little bit of a problem in that they usually try, They I feel like a lot of their de designs are kind of violent in a way, and, or they're absorbing women. And I find them a bit misogynist, but I also find them very interesting. I love the piece on the right where it gives the illusion that she's in a tutu, but she was actually in a long, long dress. And with um, the background blacked out, it gives you a, a, a trompe l'oeil, uh, the illusion that she's like cut in half. This is another look by Victor and Rolf. It's an ad um, featuring Lady Gaga. So here they're taking a ruffle that usually belongs at the bottom of a, the hem of a skirt or a dress, and she's engulfed by it. Uh, so they're always pushing the boundaries of what fashion is supposed to be into something new. And um, Victor and Ralph are also looking to the past. So you see this uh, piece they did that came down the runway in uh, fall, uh, winter 2001. Uh, they had all of the models' faces blacked out, like jet black. And again, that negation of the female body bothers me a little bit but you can see how they like to exaggerate everything so here they're taking a traditional leg of mutton sleeve that you see on the right in these two historical pieces and send it down uh, the runway in 2001 and then another um, giant oversized ribbon piece from 2005 on the left and last but very much not least is the continuing efforts of Junya Watanabe and the great genius Rei Kawakubo. Junya Watanabe comes into his own and this is just um, an example here of the super high technical achievements along with this like really wide-ranging and big concept sculptural pieces that he was designing.